was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not to just simply say thank you for all you've done for us sounds 
so shallow. We just want you to know this morning, Jesus, that we love you. And we are so thankful for everything that you have done in our life. For the way, Lord, you loved us when we were unlovable. For the way that you chose to go to Calvary to pay the price for our sins and our forgiveness. And Lord, today, you've even let us come into your presence. We just want you to know, Lord, that our desire for the remainder of this service is that you just have free reign. Walk amongst us, speak to our hearts, convict us, challenge us, encourage us. Whatever's needed, Lord, we give you permission to do your thing today. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, we are currently going through Scripture, trying to find how we can be obedient to the command of Jesus. The command that I'm referring to is when Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength. And last Sunday morning, we started looking at what that means when we look at our soul. Now, we define the soul for you as that, that part of our human makeup that's actually the source of our emotions, our will, and our actions. And we discovered that because the soul is thought to be eternal, the enemy works overtime not just to try to infiltrate it like he does our heart and like he does our mind and like he does our actions at times, but rather he tries to capture our soul. He tries to literally steal it from us. Well, you know, in our text this morning, we're going to be in Mark chapter 14. And we're going to be looking at a time in the life of Jesus when he knows that the cross of Calvary is very near. We're talking hours close. And we're going to see that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane with three of his closest followers, Peter, James, and John, by this time he already knows that he's been betrayed. He knows that he's going to be arrested. And he knows the chaos is about to begin. So let's take up in our scripture with verse 32. Mark chapter 14, listen to this. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said to them, stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell on the ground and he prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, Everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Now, in this passage of Scripture, we have a great example of the soul. We see in this passage that the soul definitely is that source of our will, our emotions, and our action. And we see how it comes into play. And... We see how Jesus, who we know is fully God, but at this point is also fully human, is facing an eternal decision. A decision that's going to involve every aspect of his soul. Now, I, I, I know this sounds really deep, especially for a Mother's Day. And moms, we're going to honor you today, so don't think we've forgotten about you. But we're going to see how this applies to us and how this is going to help us better understand what we feel and, and what we think and how we act and, and how our relationship with the Lord is vitally important. So what I want us to do is I want us to look at our soul. And we're going to begin by looking at what we're calling human emotions. 
Now, when we talk about emotions, we're talking about that mental reaction, that strong feeling to, to something that is said or something that is done or something happening or, or something that we see, hear, or experience. <clears throat> now, our emotions, we know, can be good. They can work in our favor. They can cause us to feel good about life. They can cause us to have a passion for things in life. And that's when our emotions are good. But we also know that our emotions can be bad. They can overwhelm us with uncertainty. And in our text, when we look at the life of Jesus and we see what's happening to him, we see that it was the latter. We see how Jesus deals with, with troubling emotions. You know, when his human emotions cause him to say, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow even to death. I don't know about you, but that captures my attention. We know, you know, I know that to feel sorrow and sadness, well, we know that's real, don't we? Some of you have experienced that recently. Some of you may be experiencing that today. We don't know. There's no way of knowing what your emotions are to those around you unless, of course, you tell them or act differently. But sorrow and sadness are very strong emotions. And sometimes these emotions can cause us to feel isolated. They can cause us to want to withdraw, to shrink into a shell. Or they can cause us to get to a place in our life where we just want to give up. We want to throw up our hands and say, I can't take this anymore. I quit. Now these kinds of emotions, and I, I really and truly think you're going to understand this, they create an internal hurt, maybe a pain, maybe an ache that nobody understands unless they've been through it. Have you ever tried to explain to somebody, I just hurt inside, but yet I don't think there's anything wrong? It's my emotions, it's sadness, it's sorrow that I seem to be going through. Now, knowing all of this makes it kind of hard for us to come to grips that Jesus is feeling these things, right? For us to think that Jesus, whose emotions always seem to be positive, upbeat, <coughs> even when he's coming at people, telling them this is what you need to do and all of this, there's always a positive aspect to them because he's trying to help them change their lives. We're not accustomed to seeing Jesus show his emotions, especially being overwhelmed by sorrow. You say, well, Pastor, why do you think he's feeling these things? Because he knows that he is facing an eternal decision. He knows that the decision that he is going to make is of such magnitude that it's not just going to affect him, it's going to affect everybody that is closest to him. That's human emotion. That's what we see in this scripture. Now, I want you to keep that in mind because now we're going to look at the second one, and that is the human will. Now, when we talk about the will, we're talking about that ability to make a choice or to express desire. I'm talking about the ability to decide between right and wrong. Some people will say that your will has power over your mind, but yet, you know, one way or the other, we still have a choice in that. We can say, I couldn't help it because my will is this way or my will is that way. But you know what? Yes, you can. You are the one who controls your will. You are the one who is, is, is in charge because no one else can control it. Now, with this in mind, we sometimes forget or let it just slip right by us. And yet it's impossible for, I mean, it's, it's important for us to remember this. At this point, Jesus has the free will to say, I don't want to do this. Do you hear me? We just sang about a fountain filled with blood that was drawn from his veins. He didn't have to do that. He had a choice. He had a will. But yet, he willingly surrenders his will to the Father. I want you to listen to this part of the passage again. At one point, he says, let this hour pass. Don't let me have to go through this. Don't make me go through this. And then he goes on and says, let this cup pass from me. Now, we're seeing his personal will. 
But what does he do? Almost immediately, he goes on and says, but not my desire, not my will, but your will be done, O Father. Now, folks, we can't always control our emotions. Sometimes we should do a better job of it, but sometimes we just cannot control them. But like Jesus, we still have a choice. Even when our emotions are running wild, we have a choice. That brings us to our third point, our human actions. Now remember, our actions are the results of the choices that we make. We have a choice, like Jesus did. When we are faced with decisions, we can say, okay, my will be done. And we do that often. Or we can look at the decision in a bigger light. We can see the bigger picture. And we can do as Jesus did here and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Do you see? The choice as to our actions belong to us. Now, our text gives us a great example of what we mentioned last week and what we mentioned when we talked about the mind and we talked about the heart. There is a battle going on inside of our lives. There's a war that's raging. And that war is between good and evil. It is between God and Satan. Both are battling for control of who we are and what we do. And we see that right here in this passage of Scripture. And the choices that we are asked to make as if they were not tough enough, we know the enemy is persistent. And he's often using the uncertainties of life or, or the unknowns of life to try and confuse us or convince us to make our decisions impulsively or, or from a selfish viewpoint. And again, like Jesus, some of the decisions we make are, you ready, eternal decisions. I want you to look at the emotions and the agony we see in this passage of Scripture in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want you to imagine how easy it would be for us to demand our own way. If we're given a choice, you're going to suffer, you're going to bleed, you're going to die, or you can walk away. Which choice would we make? Now, if we're just looking at it in light of something small, we'd be crazy not to make the decision to say, I'm out of here. But this is an eternal topic, an eternal decision that must be made. And we have the choice. Our will will determine our actions. But you know, we see here that Jesus gives us hope. And I say that because he did not give in. Even though he knows what awaits him, he chooses to do the will of the Father. All because he knows what's in best interest of eternity. Now folks, why did he do it? Why did Jesus do it? Can I tell you what I think? He knows the infinite value of of our soul. He knows what we're worth. We see ourselves at times and we, I mean, I know when we get into these little discouraging valleys and all of this, there's times we question, you know, am I worth anything? Does anybody care? Is anything ever going to go right again? Why does everything happen to me? And, and you know, if, if I ask for a show of hands today, I think everybody here that would have the courage to be honest would have to say, yeah, I've been there a few times. Jesus knows our worth. He knows that we are so valuable that he was willing to suffer and die. Not just for his will, but the will of the Father. And so what were his actions? His actions said, I will lay down my life for you. Now folks, such love that somebody would do that for us. So how do we love him in return? That's the question 
that we have to ask ourselves today, but here's an answer for you. With all of our heart and motives, with all of our mind and thoughts, with all of our soul, emotion, desires, will, and actions, we should be saying, I love you, Jesus. And I will follow you. And the decisions I make will not just be in my own selfish interest, but it will be in the interest of eternity. For those around me, for family, for friends. I'm willing to make that kind of sacrifice. And when we talk about sacrifice, you know, most of us, at least those in my generation and younger, um, you, you probably really don't understand a whole lot about sacrifice. We don't know a whole lot about being completely without. I, my mother was one of the, the godliest women that, that I've ever known. And I know everybody probably says that about their mom, but my mother really was. I mean, I, I've told you many times about the times that I had to be disciplined and mom swore that it was every day. And she used to say, you know, I would come in there to wake up my little boy and think I ought to just go get the belt and whip him now because I know before sunset he's going to deserve it. I never heard my mom raise her voice in anger. So if you hear me raise my voice, I get that from dad's side of the family, not mom's. But as kids growing up, now, we lived in the deep south, you understand that. Times were hard, and we were poor. We didn't know it. At least we kids didn't. And there would be times when the only thing that we had to eat for dinner, well, supper where I'm from, was peas and cornbread. And I remember as a little boy saying, Mom, isn't there some meat or something that we could have with? No, we're just going to do vegetables tonight. And there would be times the four of us kids would sit down and dad would sit down and mom would just kind of stand around and piddle in the kitchen. And with, Mom, aren't you going to eat? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm really not hungry. And I remember as a kid, when we're all done, we've all had plenty turn around and look and see mom fixing a plate. And it didn't sink in till later years that she was doing that for us. She wanted us to have enough. She was willing to do without. She was willing to make the sacrifice. And I thought... I know that's not on the same scale of the sacrifice that Jesus made, but it was a sacrifice of love. She loved us with her heart and her mind and her actions and her will. And can I tell you, she loved God even more. We hear people talk about, well, I'm in church today because of a friend here, a friend there, a friend this, that, a relative. I stand and say I'm in the kingdom of God today because of my mother, my grandmothers, and my wife. They prayed, they sacrificed, and they didn't give up. Jesus did that for us. And when we understand that, we begin to understand a whole lot better what it means to love him in return with our soul, our eternal soul. Let me pray for us. Jesus, I know this is a, a lot to try and, and soak in and comprehend today. I know we've got a lot of things planned for today, family gatherings and all sorts of things. But Lord, you've given us an opportunity to be in your presence, and for that we are so grateful. And I pray right now, Lord, that you would help us, those of us gathered here, those of us that will watch this on, online. 
I pray that you would help us to make the right eternal decision. That decision that says, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to love God with all of my heart, mind, soul, and strength. And I will love my neighbors as I love myself. Jesus, would you be with us in these closing moments? As we stand before you, guide and direct us, Lord, for we ask it in your name.
with all creation rising. Praise to the King of Kings. 